All right, welcome everyone to the Zojo Talk podcast. I'm Paul Lefever, the Zojo Developer Evangelist. And this week, my guest is Tim Hare. And you might remember or have noticed Tim's name if you use the forums regularly, because he's one of the top 10 forum posters. Welcome, Tim. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Paul. Good to be here. Well, Tim, I usually like to have our guests just uh, give us a little bit of background. How'd you come to start using Zojo and uh, what do you use it for these days? Well, back in 2005, um, we had uh, hit the end of life of our current development environment, and we were looking around for something new. Uh, we were a uh, software uh, development house, and we do um, software for wholesale distributing, uh, inventory management, uh, accounting, that sort of thing. And we, uh, we noticed Zojo, or well, back then it was real basic. Uh, when you were advertising a uh, uh, an upgrade for uh, uh, Visual Basic programmers and uh, offering free licenses to uh, Real Basic, so we thought we'd uh, check you all out, and um, we we liked Zojo slash Real Basic uh, for the clean interface. Uh, it's uh, a, it was a familiar language to us. Uh, was very basic like we were coming from a basic dialect you were using visual basic before primarily no actually we, we were using <laughs> we were using a uh an environment called metropolis which originated back on alpha microsystems it was originally alpha basic uh, okay yeah i've heard of that yeah yeah it was a motorola chip uh way back in the day and they had migrated to uh, Windows, but still using the same uh, programming language interface. Uh, and, you know, they stumbled as a company and we uh, were tied closely to them. So we had to jump ship and, you know, swim about like drowned rats. And we found. So they just, they just pulled the plug on it, essentially? Well, yeah, they, they made some bad decisions that we could not uh, follow. And. Ah. Basically, they like tripled the uh, licensing in one year, and that was a no go for us. So uh, we had to find a, a you know another programming language, and so we uh, found uh, Real Basic, and I guess we we evaluated Visual Basic, we evaluated you know the .NET stuff. Um, I was kind of leaning to to C based languages, but my boss was a you know, died in the world uh, basic programmer, and so we had to find a basic dialect that we that would work for us. Um, and so I I was tasked to look around and, and find something, and you know uh, we saw real basic, and it was it was what we needed. Um, and the more I got into it, the more I liked it. Um, even though, like I said, I was kind of leaning towards other languages, but uh, I had to swallow my my C roots and uh, <laughs> stick with a basic dialect. Uh, and I'm glad I did, because Real Basic has been uh, a real good thing for us. It's been easy to use. Uh, I like the object oriented uh, programming approach, and I, I learned object oriented on real basic. Uh, so that was kind of cool. And it, the first year was like, you know, opening a, a you know, a, a box at Christmas every day. It's like, Oh, you can do that. Oh, you can do that. Yeah. You know, it was, it was really cool. Um, and people still find that today in this day and age. Yeah, people yeah, have been right. using it for a long time will often stumble across something like, "Oh, geez, I that you know something might have been added, you know, relatively recently. They didn't investigate or try out, and all of a sudden, boom, they can use it and it helps them out." Great. I, I'm surprised how much uh, Zojo actually does out of the box, uh, and then you can extend it, of course, with declares and all kinds of other things, third party tools. Uh, so it's. Uh, it was a it was a good experience. Uh, of course, it was pretty you know high pressure at the beginning trying to work everything out. You know, we had the whole thing of printing, which at the time Zojo or Real Basic did not provide any kind of a printing tool. So I had to 
you know, develop something, you know, uh, in-house. Uh, and, and I really missed the boat on that. I should have packaged that and sold it. Uh, <laughs> because by the time I, I got around to thinking about doing that, you know, we had several other things pop up, you know, uh, it was um, the thing that Bikini now has, uh, the Bikini shorts. Um, I don't remember the original name of that, but that came up around the time. And then uh, Zojo was producing their own reporting tool. Uh, so my, my reporting tool has kind of been put on the shelf <laughs> because of that. Uh, and then it's been that way for a couple of different uh, utilities that, that I had to develop along the way. Uh, but, you know, I'm, I'm very happy using them in-house. Uh, but uh, Zojo has allowed me to create some really powerful, um, you know, subunits uh, to, to use that we use throughout our, our software. You know, our, our database access, you know, everything we do is very database driven. And so we developed some uh, classes to handle databases and uh, that became a non-issue. I mean, just, you know, throw a class on there and, you know, away you go. So, yeah, that's a, that's a nice approach. I like, I tend to try to do that on larger projects as well. Yeah. Uh, so Zojo has allowed us to create all of these, you know, little utility classes that you know become incorporated into our our um, application framework, and over the years we've you know produced a very vibrant, robust application framework that allows us to do very rapid application development. Uh, and you know we just reuse these things over and over and over, and you know so I can put out a fairly you know nice. Uh, application in a very short time. So tell us a little bit about your company and the apps uh, that you make using Zojo. Okay. They, uh, they sound like they're pretty substantial and it might be good for people to hear about that sort of stuff. Okay. Well, our, our vertical market, the, the one that we're kind of focused on is um, a wholesale distribution. And that's where you've got the guy that's got a warehouse full of stuff and he's buying and selling, you know, and, you may do some uh, retail work, some off the street stuff, but mostly is you know selling to other uh, companies, so B two B. And the typical problems that you run into is he's got you know he's just running himself ragged, um, trying to keep track of all the orders that he's processing, you know, until so he's he's got to buy stuff on time, and uh, you know then he. Uh, fulfill all the orders that, that are coming in. And so we created a, a an application that streamlines all of that. And uh, typically you've got a guy where he's doing, you know, he's doing his data entry more than once. And that's the main problem that he's got. And that's very inefficient. Or he's doing that on paper. And that's, I mean, it's, it's crazy. And that's the worst. Well, it's, yeah. it's always nice when you find a client that's still doing stuff paper-based because it, it's yeah, right. such a large jump to any software you're going to provide them that it becomes hopefully an easier sell. It, yeah, it does. And, and it becomes a real big bang for the buck for the client. So, right. you know, you go in and, and automate his, his paper stuff and he's been working, you know, 13, 14 hour days and on the weekends and suddenly he's got his weekends back and he doesn't know what to do with himself. And, and then he's able to triple his business uh, without adding any new employees. And that, you know, does wonders for his bottom line. And you look like a hero just because you came in and automated his paper flow. Uh, so, yeah, that's the kind of thing we do. And so we have a very strong, um, I don't know, uh, consulting uh, aspect. So we'll, we'll go in and we'll analyze, you know, a business and see, okay, where are the bottlenecks? And can we uh, resolve these bottlenecks using software? And if we can, then it's a win-win. And if, if we can't, then we'll actually walk away. We're not going to sell software to somebody that won't substantially improve their business because that's a waste of their money. And, you know, it'll just become a bad client in the end. Right. So your your consulting service, though, it sounds like are primarily geared around the software that you do sell. So you mm -hmm. don't just build random products for random right. clients or anything. Right. Yeah. We, yeah. We try not to do full custom stuff. You know, we want to base the 
the solution on stuff we have on the shelf, stuff we've done before. Uh, but we look for like an 80 20 fit, and so we'll customize 20% of it. Uh, so we had a you know a customer that we walked into that was doing you know standard you know distribution kind of things, but they also were doing a they had a an aspect of the business that was uh, they were renting uh, equipment, and so we developed a, a rental module for them, uh, which was full custom, and but it tied into you know our accounting, it tied into the inventory, uh, and so we were able to drop in our standard software plus you know a, a custom piece of software. So we will do that sort of thing. Uh, we have a, a payroll module that we developed along the way for somebody, you know, and have been reselling. And we are talking now to a, a client that their main, they, they do something completely different than what we've always done, but their main problem is payroll. And uh, we will probably develop a custom front end to our payroll module to smooth out, you know, but, I mean, they're, they're running, you know, Excel spreadsheets and manual calculations and, and all that. And we think we can help them. With that. So that's the kind of thing we do. Nice. Yeah, I've worked at uh, companies that have pretty much had that same type of business model where they have a, you know, a major project that a product that solves a lot of needs, but often because, you know, businesses do things ever so slightly different from each other, you have to tweak things and it and it's good. You get them in with a product that is mostly going to solve the problem and then you get to, you know, tweak it for their personal, the, the way they need it to work, which makes them happy. And that also brings in a little bit more revenue and uh, ends up with right. a nice solid business deal. And it, it provides a nice niche at the bottom end. Uh, you know, there, there are companies like, you know, SAP, you know, and Sage who provide a product, but they tend to be a little more rigid. And so a, you know, a guy who's doing less than, you know, 20 million a year um, can, you know, access those products, but they don't really fit and it'll be like a, you know, a bad fitting suit. You know, it's, it does the job, but it's a little uncomfortable. It'll mm-hmm. never be comfortable. So if he can find somebody to tailor it, yeah, uh, that's where we come in. Right. Yeah. And some of those big name projects are just, I worked at a company once that was putting in uh, PeopleSoft mm-hmm. and uh, that one, I mean, that thing was just a nightmare and it, they're so expensive and then they send in a fleet of consultants and it doesn't seem like when they're all right. said and done that it even works any better than it, than the original yeah. installation did. It, right. it wasn't a fun experience. Yeah. So, and one aspect of that is uh, keeps us so, somewhat contained to the uh, Portland metro area because we are very, you know, hands-on, very face-to-face. Uh, so we don't drop the software and walk away. We, we like to maintain a long-term relationship with the client. And I'd like to be on site looking around, seeing new stuff. You know, it's like, oh, I, I see that pile of paper on your desk. Tell me about that. You know, right. And, and so we can continue to improve their business and, and improve our relationship and have, you know, uh, follow-on projects. So most of our clients have been with us for almost 20 years. And we have, we have you know, evolved their their business as we go and evolved our software to meet their, their needs. Right. As we go. Well, that's pretty cool. So you've been, 20 years, so you've been doing this sort of thing for pretty darn long time, it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. I've actually been with Teleos Systems for 25 years, and uh, which is an insanely long time. The company's been around for 35 or more. And uh, I actually just bought half the company last October. So I've gone from junior programmer to half half owner in, in the period of 25 years. And, and that's been a real insane change for me. Uh, my, you know, uh, my boss slash partner uh, went through some, some real personal struggles. Uh, he, his wife was sick and passed away a couple years ago. Um, he's not sure what he wants to do with his life. You know, he's retirement age. Um, he's trying to retire, trying to let go of the company. Uh, so I've been, I've been running the company for a couple of years now, almost. 
uh, it just relegating the main decisions back to him and, you know, with all he's been going through. Uh, and so I finally now have the authority along with the responsibility, <laughs> yeah, which has been great, but it's also now it's all on me uh, sort of thing. So uh, uh, that's fun. I mean, being a, a being the owner and um, boss has has been a big change. Uh, my wife uh, joined the company, you know, three years ago to do sales and marketing for us. And okay. so she has really grown in that um, uh, in that aspect, in that role. And so she's kind of grown up into more of a, a business orientation and, and a, a, a marketing. She's great with networking. Man. She is. She can talk to anybody. Which is awesome. Well, you need that, especially when you're selling business type software. Yeah, right, right. Uh, so that aspect, and so we've we've really become partners in in that in our, and that has really helped our marriage. I mean, being uh, in business together could can either shipwreck you or make you stronger, and has made us stronger. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You definitely hear stories one way or the other. I know when when I was doing consulting for myself uh, many years ago, and my wife got laid off, I said, "Well, you know, you could just you know come in and do some consulting with me because she was a software developer at the time." And yeah, we didn't end up really working together well, so that didn't work. But she she actually ended up switching gears, and now she's a teacher. But uh, go figure. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, my wife was a teacher and, and came in to do uh, marketing, software marketing. Uh, which is kind of cool. And yeah, the first year was really hard uh, and we had to figure some stuff out, you know, but we worked through it and have, have really become a good team. I think. Do you have uh, a separate office or do you, do you have a home office or how do you, how do you have that set up? That's kind of a funny story. Yeah. I do have a separate office um, of a building about a mile away from my home. So the commute has never been terrible. Uh, I'm the envy of all my friends. And, <laughs> And at one point, I don't know, 15 years ago, we had like 10 people in the office and it was, you know, a real busy place. And we we're kind of packed out, you know, uh, kind of at max capacity. You know, and then, you know, things happened. Uh, we had our uh, hardware division uh, with, you know, Alpha Microsystems supporting their hardware. And then we switched away from that and eventually uh, had to let that part of the business go. So that you know, dumped a couple of people and we had, you know, you know, through attrition and, and various things, we, we kind of dwindled down. And then, you know, 2007 happened where we had the big, you know, recession happen. And 2007, 2008, 2009, by the end of that, we, there were just two of us in the office. And then my, you know, my partner decided to work from home. So the last couple of years, I've been, you know, solo in the office. So I've got this big office to myself <laughs> <laughs> and I can come and go as I want. You know, nobody's keeping tabs on me, you know, kind of thing. So uh, it, it's been great. And we plan to fill the thing again, but I do have, I do have an office building. Uh, and, you know, so I can leave, leave home and, and kind of separate home life from work life as much as I need to. Uh, so, yes. That's, that's been great. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's neat. Yeah. When I work, well, I still work at home all the time, obviously. Uh, but when I first started switching uh, from an office in downtown and I'll say downtown Portland, because I'm in the original Portland and (laughs) the, and, and, uh, Tim is on the other coast. I'm on the East coast in the, the original tiny Portland and Tim is on the West coast in the big Portland that, you know, is the one that stole our name. And now whenever you talk about Portland, they only think about the one out there. Uh, I'm not going to try to say the state because I, I always will pronounce that wrong. There's, you got to put the accent on the right syllable or something. Yeah. How, so how do you say that? We say it Oregon. Oregon. See, I would have said gone. Okay, it's Oregon. <laughs> right. I knew there was something there. All right. <laughs> Oregon. gone. No, it's Oregon. <laughs> yeah. So when I first transitioned from working, you know, you know, commuting into an office in the city and, and whatnot, I actually, uh, they have things around here called co-working spaces which are offices you can rent downtown with other people that work solo or other smaller companies. And then you, 
you pay a smaller monthly fee and you can go and use this kind of shared office space and it you know provides internet and conference rooms and stuff like that and uh, i did that for a little bit and would go in occasionally but then over time i just you know completely lost the urge to have any commute and drive into town <laughs> and <laughs> i like my 10 foot commute now yeah. and uh, so I, I ended up letting those things lapse but occasionally in the past I, i've used them like if i had clients coming into town or something i'd rent like an office for a month or something like that so yeah it is neat to have you have an office you can go to sometimes yeah i i would i would like to work from home but there's enough activity happening at home that's a distraction. You know, I, I need to, to be able to get away and just have my own space. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do when I have more people in the office because that may become a distraction as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So now that you've got a lot more responsibility and stuff, are you the only guy doing uh, the development also? Well, I, I can still feed projects to uh, to my, my partner, Roger. Um, He's, he's still involved. He's trying to retire, uh, but he, you know, he's still having trouble letting go. And, and he really enjoys programming, uh, probably primarily right now because of Zojo, because you know, we can get so much cool stuff done so quickly. If it were more of a tedium, I think he'd be retired. But because, right, right. because of the, the you know, rapid IDE, the development you know, environment uh, that Zojo provides, it keeps him interested. Well, I've always said that it's a uh, coding in Zojo is fun and, you it know, is. you know, coding in, you know, Java is not fun. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I've done, you know, some, some PHP work lately and, um, and I tried to do a project in C and I have to admit I'm spoiled <laughs> Yeah, because just going back to doing everything on your own, you know, e even with, you know, libraries you can use, it's, it's just tedious using anything else. So uh, I I love using Zojo, uh, and you know, like I said, so yeah, no. So we we have right now we've got uh, two Zojo developers, we've got the marketing person, my wife, and we just hired my son, uh, who's he's twenty six, he's married, uh, he he's got he just had our first grandchild. Uh, oh wow! Well, congratulations here. Yeah, right. So he's about a year old now. Uh, his name is Logan. Uh, he's just turned one uh, and uh, he's, he's such a joy. So they, they live about uh, 15 miles away. Uh, so they're, they're local, you know, uh, and so we can see him as much as we want. Uh, so that's been, that's been really fun. And you're training him in Zojo, and I presume. Zojo, he, he got his degree in uh, web development. Uh, okay. I'm going to use him to develop more of a, a web presence. Uh, we're, and we're, we're fighting over what to use, you know, whether you use Zojo you know, Web Edition or to use strictly the languages he's familiar with. You know, so that's uh, that's an interesting dance right now. Uh, what, what application we use for that. Uh, and your apps right now are, are desktop apps. Yes, yeah, we, we've been then. purely desktop apps. Uh, we've been able to migrate some of our desktop development onto tablets if they're using you know x86 chips, you know, and we run you know like Windows x86. Yep. Um, and there are a couple that are out there. And, yeah, and I bought one myself, a little a little tiny HP one that runs uh, Windows x86 on it, and it's pretty fun to play with. Yeah, I mean it's it, it's really cool that. The stuff just runs on it. So I can, you know, we've been able to, you know, we've got a couple of clients who have a, a fleet of uh, drivers who go out and deliver stuff, you know, uh, and so they, they can take a tablet with them and, and process orders on the road. And when they come back, they just upload that information into the main database. And that, you know, uh, improves productivity as well. Mm -hmm. So it's not the the pure... Um, handheld environment that that used to that people are used to from way back when, but it's a low cost solution. Uh, those those handheld devices that that people are typically you know typically using, you know, are expensive, and they break. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing is you, you're always you know worried about them because they're, you know they're fragile and you know you're going to be taking them places where they could easily get damaged. 
Right. So you can, you know, pick up a tablet for 189 bucks on Amazon and, you know, you're good to go. So it's, it, it's a much less, much less intensive as far as hardware and, you know, you're not worried as much about, you know, your, your ham fisted driver breaking the, the device. <laughs> yeah. So that's been cool. But we would like to, you know, expand into more pure web development. And, and so, uh, my son Ben is going to provide, uh, that opportunity for us. So we're, we're already growing as a company. Uh, nice. Yeah. It's a growing family. Uh... Yeah, right. I, I hadn't intended to become a family business, but it really is looking <laughs> like a family business right now. Uh, you know, my wife keeps telling me, you know, no, we can't just stay a family business. We have to hire other people, you know, over time. Uh, and that's good to hear. Good to be reminded of. But because I could get real comfortable, you know, just hiring my family members, you know, <laughs> have control, you know. Uh, but uh, we, we have to, you know, keep an eye to the future. Uh, and uh, and keep growing that way. So yeah, right now there are, are two Zojo developers, soon to be three. You know, but I am definitely uh, training my son Ben in Zojo because he has, he's, will hopefully eventually uh, take over the company when I'm gone. You know, in twenty years, and uh, so we gotta gotta train him and, and get him you know set and, and ready to go with that. And he has, he's really has enjoyed Zojo so far, you know, in the, in the limited experience he's had with it. Uh, he, he sees the benefits. You know, you just, you know, throw some uh, controls out onto a window and you have an application running in, in fairly short order. Nice. All right, well, switching gears a little bit, I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast that uh, people probably would recognize your name if they uh, look at the forums at all, because uh, you're a frequent commenter on many threads or conversations, as we call them. It'll, you know, you'll ask a question and, you know, short period of time, boom, Tim Hare has your answer right there yeah. as if, as if, you know, he, he's your little guardian Zojo angel. And uh, so, yeah. so how did you come to, to be such uh, uh, I don't know how I want to phrase it? be able to answer people's questions so quickly and efficiently? Well, I, I have gotten a lot of positive feedback from my, um, uh, my time on the forums and, and that's been, been very nice, but my use of the forums has really been very self-serving. Uh, you know, so for, for all the accolades I get, uh, you know, yeah, that's great, but, but I'm using you guys. Uh, so you have to be aware of that. Uh, Back in, like I said, back in 2006, I think I is when I first started on the forums, and uh, I, I I registered like January 2006. And I made my first post on the forums in February of 2007. So a full year went by before I actually started responding to anybody's questions because I I didn't feel you know qualified to to even say anything for the first time, and I was busy you know trying to convert all of our software I and mean, we had you know a million lines of code or something i i have never counted but it, on that order you know hundreds of thousands of lines of code that we had to convert from this other environment to uh, real basic and so i had to learn real basic learn how to use a window how to use you know, a, a, a list box how to use a canvas uh, all of that stuff uh, in in real short time, so I was a an avid reader of the forum for the first year. Uh, I spent a lot of time on it, and what I would do is I would take the questions I I saw on the forum. And I said, "Oh, you know, I've never really dealt with you know a serial control, or I've never really dealt with the you know uh, HTML viewer. Um, I wonder what those are all about." You know, or I've never haven't really worked uh, extensively with the list box, and you know, so some some question comes up about you know how do I sort a list box, and how do I you know I've got you know uh, numeric information in the list box, and it's sorting really weird uh, because it's doing a textual sort, you know, a string right. sort on it. How how do I deal with that? So I I take it I start up Zojo and you know uh, create a 
a throwaway project and just play with the list box for a while and, and figure out how I do it and then go back and see what the real answer was. Yeah. So I'd try and figure it out on my own and go back and reread the thread as, you know, the, the experts, you know, people like Aaron, uh, Gosh, what, what what was Aaron's last name? Oh, Aaron. Yeah, the guy that started the first forums was Aaron Ballman. Well, Ballman. Okay, I was going to say Ballman, and that no, that can't be right. Uh, yeah, when Aaron Ballman would you know come back and answer and give the the canonical you know true answer to the question, and uh, I found out that I was getting them right you know after a while, and so then it became a game of can I get my answer in before Aaron answers. <laughs> so I, I started answering some of the some of the questions, uh, but I was still using them, you know, for my own needs to try and learn more about Zojo, more about how to do things, and then you know it it, it started happening where you know I'd see a, a question on on the forums, I would go and answer the question. And then, the, the, you know, like the next week, we'd run into a problem in our software that I could solve using what I had just learned. So I, I got got where I was staying just one step ahead of our internal needs by going on the forums and and learning new stuff. So you using the forums all, like a um, like a training ground. You were, you, really you was. were... I, yeah, I used it as my personal training ground. Uh, People give you fun little questions. You'd research them, learn about it, and then you'd have. Uh, and it's possible that you know when you're saying that you know, like a week or so later, you realized you needed that thing. It might be more that now that you knew about this thing, you realized a way you could take advantage of it too. I can actually utilize it. Yeah, I can do that in my software. Yeah, um, the, the campus was a big one. Um, all all the little questions about graphics and you know how how to draw stuff, how to prevent flicker, how to uh, do animation. Um, that that was huge for us because recording is, was a big deal, you know. And that uses the the graphics class when you open a printer. And we also needed to to do a report preview, uh, so that used the canvas in a window. Um, and so I I really devoured all the threads about the canvas and graphics and uh, doing drawing and and all of that, and I developed, you know, and out of that, I developed a very full-featured, um, very, you know, dynamic um, reporting class. And so I made a class, you know, for, for reporting that would draw a, you know, the, the a, you know, a banded report either to a, a uh, printer or to the canvas graphics. Um, and, you know, use all of the stuff I learned about, you know, objects oriented and about the, the graphics class. And so <clears throat> basically what we do is I, I modeled the report. You know, we're coming from the, in the existing environment, which was laid out as, you know, all, all the reporting was done as, you know, like 80 columns, 24, you know, 80 columns wide or 132 columns wide. If you go to compressed print on a printer, uh, so way old school stuff. And so I, we lay out our report using the, the old school way in terms of inches. And then I convert inches into pixels. And right. so um, what that allowed me to do, though, is we found out we could go beyond 80 or 132 columns, have any number of columns. So the report is really in hundredths of an inch. And... We, we found we had a lot of freedom where we can just throw out a bunch of columns on, on a, you know, a pseudo page or a, a virtual page and have any number of, of columns in, in hundreds of inches. And then when you convert them back to the graphics objects, well, the graphics has X number of pixels wide. So you just convert them back into pixel and compress or expand as needed and you know, uh, our, our reports suddenly took on a life of their own where they could be, you know, you print them in, in, uh, in portrait mode and they, it, the print just automatically compresses down 
you know, the font size compresses down to, to fit the space or you turn it on its side in landscape and you get a much larger print and it becomes more readable. Or yeah. if you go to legal landscape or, or some legal, other paper Exactly, side, yeah. right. And um, our, our clients went gaga over that because suddenly all of their reporting looked beautiful and they, they had so much control over how how it looked on the page. You know, they just, you know, turn it on the side and, and it looks great. And then, you know, of course, then the number of lines per page is just, you know, a uh, we're, we're doing a virtual six lines per inch to mimic what we did in the past, um, which is, you know, just take, you know, number of pixels per inch divided by six and, and that's your your step down the page as you you go line by line, uh, and when you hit the end of the page, you just you know reject and go to the next page and print your headers and you know off you go. And we don't think about that anymore, but it's a, such a powerful tool. I mean, we can whip out a report for somebody in no time flat, and nice. they they think we've done a lot of work, and we haven't. <laughs> yeah, uh, so. You you create you know, little classes like that, or in this case, big classes. I'm sure there's 100,000 lines of code in that class. Uh, but you know, I did that back in 2007, and we've been you know reaping the benefits of that ever since. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's and all of that was you know basically being on the forums, learning more about the canvas and more about the graphics class and and how to utilize it. Yeah, more about object-oriented programming. You know, I had no idea what an object was when we started with Real Basic, uh, but it's all very object-oriented now, and you know we we just look like pros. <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, one thing you had you mentioned uh, is that you you essentially rebuilt existing software using Zojo. Yeah, and. Uh, I know a lot of people always ask that question. Do you have any uh, high level thoughts or advice on the process that you did for that? Um, you know, just take it bite by bite. Um, you know, take some small aspect of the of the software and focus on it. Um, so, you know, I started, I took, you know, one of our utility programs. You know, you, so we're very database centric. So we have a lot of small database editors you know, table editor, basically. So you have right. like a, a salesman table, which is nothing more than, you know, an, an ID number and a, and a name and maybe a couple of other fields, you know, like, you know, their, uh, their commission percentage or, or what have you, their, you know, their region. Um, so I just took one of those editors and focused on it, you know, for a while and got something going uh, and then, so you, you, you start small, you get something going, and then you refine it once, you know, because they're, you're going to do it wrong the first time. So you make a couple of passes at the thing, uh, and make it more and more object oriented, make it, you know, uh, you, you build your, you build, like I said, you build your database classes, you build your, your table classes on top of your database class. Um, you build a list box class so you can quickly populate a, a list of information and not have to think about it too hard. Um, then, you, you know, uh, you, we've got, you know, window classes. So you, uh, every, everything is a subclass. So basically. Right. Well, it sounds like you did more of a, uh, you know, functionality type migration rather than what I hear some people think they want to try and do is like a line of code migration. Yeah, I mean, we tried initially to do the, the line by line migration. And I got, you know, at some point, you start thinking in both worlds, you know, so you, you know, I understood our old code, and I began to understand the new code. You know? uh, so yeah, you, you do look at it function by function. And we had, fortunately, we had uh, kind of modularized our old code, you know, because you have to, you know, just, and so we were somewhat modular, you know, to begin with. So I started migrating module by module. And, you know, so you start, you look at the old code and, and you can kind of imagine what that's going to be in the new code. But no, you don't go line by line. It's impossible. Um, but I, I started writing code in Zojo that looked a lot like the code that we had written pre previously. Uh, and so we, we, re we retained a lot of stuff we shouldn't have. 
Um, you know, I, I try and you know train my my son Ben on it, and I have to apologize for like naming conventions. And you know, so we, we retained variable names, we retained you know table names in the database, uh, we retained a lot of stuff just so that it was it would look familiar to us. Right. You know, but uh, but over time, that evolved away from from that. Um, so yeah, I mean, you, you can't like just make a, a clean break of it and rewrite uh, the stuff brand new. But at the same time, um, you can't try and do a, a line by line conversion. I mean, that would be, be well. Crazy. That that would yeah, that's kind of crazy. Uh, well, I've, I you know I've worked at many companies where you know it, every company you ever work for is going to end have a product that's transitioning from one tool or language to another. I mean, it happens. And, uh, you know, it, you know, the managers are always like, oh, well, we'll just, you know, buy some product that just reads the line, the source code in and spits it out in the new language we've chosen. And, uh, you know, all the tech people are like, oh, God, no, please don't do that. And, uh, <laughs> and you know, I, I mean, you can always do that and then you get some results, but it, it's not going to be what you really wanted in the long run. And so I do try to always encourage people to do a lot of what you just described there is, you know, focus on a specific thing, recreate it using the new tool you're working with, uh, like Zojo, and and take advantage of some of the things that, you know, Zojo brings to the table that maybe you didn't have before. So you can, you know, have a design that's a little better, hopefully. Right. So you, you can improve things as you go. And we have, we have way improved the, the functionality of the software just because, you know, we're now so much more, um, you know, Windows compliant. And it was amazing to drop in, you know, a, the Windows version of our software and, and people, you know, pick it up and say, Oh, yeah, of course that's the way it should happen. Yeah. <laughs> that's the way it should be. You know, there's a lot of engineering that goes into that though. Uh, you, we spent a lot of time talking about how the, the software should function. Uh, what, what keys should we use? You know, what, what, uh, you know, shortcut keys on the keyboard should we use? Um, and part of the arguments that we got into, uh, and, and we fought tooth and nail on this. It was, it was crazy in the office. Uh, but, you know, it's like, okay, Windows does it this way. The old code does it that way. We've got people who are used to the old way. How much can we change, you know, to, to accommodate new users who are are familiar only with Windows based products, right? Is our our existing client base who are you know intimately familiar with the old way of doing things and are are so proficient on the keyboard? I mean, because we we try to to make everything keyboard driven, and man, Windows is not very happy with that. <laughs> yeah, but uh, in our old way, our old software, everything was keyboard driven. And if you touch the mouse, you were doing it wrong. Yeah. So because that, that slows you down, you know, it, it kills productivity. You have to go from the keyboard to the mouse, back to the keyboard, because you have to look up at the screen, look at the mouse, and then look back at the keyboard to get your key, your fingers, you know, situated back on the keyboard. And, and you're just wasting time to do that. So we have, you know, users of the old software who could just fly on the keyboard. I mean, they were, they were taking orders. I mean, they have, you know, the headset on, talking to a customer over the phone and, and just taking the order in real time, which is what you know, produces those those big uh, improvements in productivity that we talked about. Uh, so, you know, they, they take the order, they hang up the phone, and everything is done. All you have to do is hit a key, print out the thing, print a quick ticket, and you know they they know in real time whether they've got the product in stock or not. They while well, they're talking to the customers, so they can say, "Oh, you you wanted X, but I don't have that. Would you like Y instead?" And so they got great customer service. I mean, they they just they forget how good they have it after a while. <laughs> they forget what it was like back back in the day when they had to you know they they scratch down the order on a piece of paper. You know, maybe put it into a system if they had a software system or not. They go out to the shelf. They go, oh, shoot, I don't have this. They have to go back to the phone, dial the customer, talk to them. You know, hey, I'm sorry, I don't have that. You know, what could we do? You know, would you like to wait? You know, would you like to do something else? 
Um, right. You know, and, you know, run the risk of the, of the customer just canceling the order and going with somebody else, you know. Uh, but so, so we had all these people who were very used to the old system. And so we had to, to make a lot of um, design uh, compromises as we went along. Uh, and and I'm, you know, I'm pretty happy with the results of all that. But we did try to really engineer the solution uh, towards a, a kind of a, a modern window. So, yeah, you can you can run our software now with the mouse only. So if you're a, a manager and you're just browsing the information with your mouse. Right, yeah, you don't know all the, the speed yeah. tips. So you can you still need, figure it yeah, out. You don't need to know how to do it, but it's still very keyboard driven. So you, the... The uh, old uh, order takers who were used to the keyboard, we didn't have to retrain them. Yeah. Uh, but then again, the new people coming on board, um, they're not as proficient, perhaps. They're not as, as quick, but they can pick up the software and, and understand it, you know, because it, it works the way a normal Windows program works. And so... You know, they, they can kind of navigate without really being trained very heavily. So we found that our our, uh, our training needs have gone way down uh, now because we don't have to teach them all the, the hardcore, you know, keyboard tips that don't make any sense until you right. use them for, you know, a year and have just gotten used to it. Uh, so they can, you know, you, they can go in and, and use the software with the mouse and, and be... Um, be functional and be you know, uh, efficient with it, but at the same time, then then you start teaching the, the keyboard tips, and I go, "Oh, you can do that. That's cool." Yeah. <laughs> well, it sounds like you had a pretty successful, uh, essentially, product migration. That's uh, that's always good to hear and good to see. Well, I think that probably is about the end of Zojo Talk for. This time around, but I want to I want to thank you, Tim, for for being on Zojo Talk, yeah, and I you. want to encourage our listeners uh, say hi to Tim on the forum. Say hi to Tim when uh, when you're at XDC in a, at the end of April. Thanks everyone for listening. Yeah.